Hi, I'm Bob Wormsley from Insidium, the makers of X-Particles and Cycles 4D. And in this video, we're going to have a look at some of the new features as part of the X-Particles Early Access Programme. Today, we'll concentrate on the modifiers and the generators, and what new features and improvements there are. So, let's get started. The XP Attractor modifier now has a new setting, which allows you to incorporate scene objects as your attractor source. In this scene, we have the emitter spitting out these arrow particles. And if I activate this attractor, you can see that the particles are attracted to the attractor's center. And whenever I move this, the particles will follow. However, I also have some spheres in this scene. And if I go into my attractor, you can see now that we have an attractor's object window. So let's just lock this window. I'm going to select all of my spheres and I'm going to drag them in. And now you can see that the particles are being attracted to the spheres as our scene objects. Now as default, the object select is set to nearest object. So as the particles are being emitted, they're being attracted to the closest object to them, which is this sphere here. If I select this sphere and move it closer to them, you can see as this one becomes the closest object, they then veer off into its direction. We can change this to furthest object, which obviously is the reverse. So now they're heading towards this object and now this object. And as they change their position, they're always going to be attracted to the object furthest away from them. We can set this to average and this one will attract them to the average point between all four objects, which obviously is somewhere in the middle here. We can set this to object index, which is a really interesting setting. So at the moment, they're being attracted to the sphere, which is first in the list, which is given an index of zero. And if I animate this value up to one, they'll then jump to the second object and then the third and then the fourth for really interesting effects. And finally, there's a random object setting. When each particle is born, it is told to randomly go towards one of these scene objects. And you can see they're being split and every object is having the particles attracted to it. So that is the new object sources in the attractors modifier. The XP limit modifier has lots of new settings. It retains the original limit positions function, but now we're also to limit the behavior of particles on scale, rotations, and other data, including fire, temperature, smoke, and fuel. So let's have a look at rotations. Uh, in this scene, we have an emitter, and in the extended data tab of the emitter, we are using rotation, and we have a simple spin. It is spinning five degrees, every second in the positive direction on the heading. So what we can do is limit this using our limit modifier. We'll go to the rotations tab, we'll check limit rotations, and let's limit those rotations on the heading positive. And we've limited it to zero degrees, meaning it can't spin at all. It is unable to rotate. If I limit this to 90 degrees, it will spin until it reaches 90 degrees and then stop. Let's go to 360 degrees and it will complete one full spin and then it will continue going in a forwards direction. So very useful and you can of course make adjustments on the heading positive, the heading negative and also to the pitch and the bank rotation modes as well. Let's have a look at what else the XP limit modifier can affect. Here we have an exposure FX simulation of smoke and fire, and it is advecting these particles. The particles are being colored using this gradient, which is being mapped to the temperature values. EFX give temperature values of between zero and one. So when there is a zero temperature value, it'll be this blue color. And when it is at one temperature value, the particle will be this color and anything else will be somewhere in between. So at the moment, those temperature values are being mapped onto these particles, but let's limit that temperature value. We'll go to our limit modifier and we're going to select other data, check it on, and the parameter to limit is going to be the temperature. 
So if I then clip the lower values and the higher values both to zero temperature, that means that we're no longer getting coloured particles because every particle has a temperature of zero, zero which means it's this blue colour. All right, let's make some adjustments. If we then clip the higher value to one, it should go back to as it was. So there we're getting the full variation of colours from those temperature values. But here, let's clamp it in the middle. So the lower clamp at 0.5 and the upper clamp at 0.5. Now every particle should have a temperature value of 0.5 which means each colour should be this one in the centre of the gradient, this uh, orange-yellow colour. Let's see. And there we go. So we're limiting the temperature value to 0.5. Let's make the lower 0.2 and the upper 0.8. And now we're going to get every colour in this gradient apart from the very extreme ends of either side. And then if we can clamp it even further, let's go 0.1 and 0.9. And then the only colours we're now going to avoid are this uh, blue and the blue either side. So XP limit can limit um, position, scale, rotation, but also lots of other data, including the physical data like temperature, fuel and fire. In this scene, we have particles being emitted and they're generating splines. They're being moved around by a network modifier, which gives us this fantastic futuristic looking grid. The problem is that if we bring in another motion modifier, let's say a curl turbulence, the particles are no longer constrained to those 90 degree turns. The turbulence is taking over and we lose the effect. But with the new feature in XP network called constrain axis, we're able to use the modifiers to move the particles whilst maintaining those nice grid turns. So now with constraint axis activated on 100%, we have the turbulence manipulating the particles, but our XP network is still working, giving us this grid effect. This works with other motion modifiers as well. Let's have a look at a rotator object. And with the constrained axis turned off, we lose the grid pattern as the rotator takes over the movement of those particles. With the new constraint axis turned on with the rotator, we're still getting the rotator manipulating the particles, but we're maintaining the grid effect, which is given to us by the XP network modifier. The XP electrics generator now has a new distance mode. In this scene, we have two emitters, one emitting stationary red particles and the other emitting stationary green particles. I've revealed the particle index of each particle system. As you can see, each particle has a number between 1 to 5. In our XP Electrics object, I have the mode set to particle to particle. In the emitter, I have the red emitter and in the destination emitter, the green. The distance mode is set to match index. And this means that the particle with the index number 1 in the green system is linked with an electrics generated spline to the particle in the red emitter system with the same index number of 1. And the rest of them are the same. Red particle 3 is linked to green particle 3. And red particle 4 is linked to green particle 4 and so on. So it's a very powerful and useful feature to be able to link with electric splines particles from two different particle systems with the corresponding particle index number. Another setting is the nearest only and in this setting all of the particles from the red system which is in our first emitter will go to the nearest particle to them in the green emitter system. And as we can say, it is green particle 2 is the closest to all of these red particles, so that is where the connection is made. The next mode is all within distance. And this is an incredibly powerful mode. You're given two distance parameters, the max distance of 100 centimetres. Now, if any of the particles are within this distance, it will make an electrics connection with a spline. At the moment, 
all of the green particles are more than 100 centimetres away from the red ones, so there are no connections. So let's gradually increase this distance amount until we start to see some particles getting joined with electric splines. And we still haven't got any, so we'll bring up this max distance and bring it up. And there's our first connection. So particle 4 from the red and particle 2 from the green are within 1,250 centimetres of each other. Let's carry on bringing this amount up and we'll start to make some more connections. There are some more connections. And we'll keep going. And as we get to an amount where every single particle exists within this distance of each other, then more and more connections are made. The final mode is the max number within distance mode. And this is similar, but it lets us define how many connections each particle can make. If we set this down to one, each particle in the red system can only make one connection with particles within the green system. And what it will do, it will look for particles that are within this maximum distance and it will look through them one by one. So it will start with the green number one particle. Are you within this maximum distance? And in this instance it is, so it immediately makes that connection with number one. If I reduce this max distance so it no longer is able to connect to particle one, it will then look for the next particle in the hierarchy, which is number two. Is that within the distance? And then it will make that connection. And it will keep going until it has got the nearest connection and only one connection per particle can be made. So if I increase this max distance up to an incredibly large amount, every single red particle will make its one and only connection with the number one particle of the green system. And if I increase this max number now to two, now all of these red particles are making a connection with the one particle and the two particle. If I increase it to three, they're now making connections with the one, two, and the three particle. The maximum number can only be five, oh, so you only have five green particles, and now every single particle is making an electric spline connection. So that is a new distance mode in the XP Electrics Generator object. If you'd like to try out these new features, then all you need to do is get involved in the X Particles Early Access Programme. Full details of how you can do that are available on the Insidium website. So, until next time, see you later. <laughs>